there is nothing in our constitution and in our laws that say either the auditor general or the holder of an independent office like the controller, uh, controller of budget are immune to prosecution. And in fact, that will be the height of impunity if we say that a holder of a constitutional office, like the leader of majority, is immune to prosecution, that independent office holders or constitutional commission holders are immune to prosecution. Honorable Speaker, when we say that we shall deal with impunity, and this House, including the leader of minority who is a member of this House, must be seen at the forefront of the fight against graft. And graft, Honorable Speaker, is not only graft when it touches on public funds or in, on public office. Even those who are in the private sector who are engaging in graft, Honorable Speaker, we must have the forefront as leaders to speak against graft and impunity in this country, Honorable Speaker. It is not lost on me, Honorable Speaker, that the same people today who purport to be defending Margaret Nyakango are the same people who yesterday were vilifying the same Margaret when she spoke about state capture, when she spoke about how she was forced in the wee hours of the last regime to withdraw 15 billion shillings from the exchequer. Thank God, Honorable Speaker, that today we are not speaking about Margaret Nyakango being forced by anybody in government to make withdrawals from the exchequer or to approve payments that she thinks should not be approved. We are talking about impropriety on the person of Margaret Nyakango before she came into office as a controller of budget. Nothing to touch on, on, on uh, her conduct in office. Honorable Speaker, lastly, I was a co-chair of the National Dialogue Committee. And I know a matter that Margaret Nyakango said in that committee that has now been blown out of proportion. And I had the leader of minority allude to it, although selectively, with some selective amnesia, of what was said in that committee. But because I was chairing that committee, I know when the, the National Treasury CS answered on the question of whether there was budgeted corruption on expenditures in the office of Margaret Nyakango. Because I remember Margaret Nyakango said that there is budgeted corruption. And I can give the example of my own office, where I am the only public officer. I know how, how much I earn. But what was budgeted for my pay was almost two times. And Honorable Speaker, the National Treasury did explain that part of what was budgeted for in the Office of the Controller of Budget included other entitlements to that office like car grants, mortgage, which had not been taken. Honorable Speaker, again, out of what the Honorable Leader of Minority seems to be doing very well, to push political narratives, that with selective amnesia, they have opted not to hear the explanation from the National Treasury. And I wondered, if there was budgeted corruption on matters touching on the salaries and wages of only one officer, that is Margaret Nyakango in the Office of the Control of Budget, who then would have been the beneficiary of that money other than herself? Therefore, <laughs> it's a fallacy, Honorable Speaker, to say that somebody is budgeting for corruption in my office and I will be the beneficiary. Honorable Speaker, again, as I said, the, the, those in the minority for the sake of political uh, pushing political narratives opt not to hear that and they only want to run away with the claim of budgeted corruption a double salary without the rebuttal from the national treasury explaining why the figures were what they were honorable speaker